All right, everyone, we're going to go ahead and get started. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Amber English Coleman. I'm the Communications Director for Congresswoman Nakima Williams, um, and it's an honor to be here with y'all tonight. Thank you so much for joining. Um, welcome to our Pelotown Hall on Seniors and Social Security. We're really excited about having this conversation. If you're joining us on the phone and you'd like to ask a question of our guests, please dial zero to be connected to someone who will take down your questions. And we're also streaming this audio online. If that's how you're joining us today, please enter your question into the Q&A or email townhallga05 at mail.house.gov. And we will do our best to answer all of your questions. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to my friend and our Congresswoman, Congresswoman Nakima Williams. Hello, 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 everybody. I'm Congresswoman Nakima Williams, and I am thankful that you have taken the time out of your evening to join us for this virtual conversation on Social Security and Medicare. Each month, I look forward to bringing timely information to my constituents and answering questions that you might have about Congress or our federal government. And y'all, I am on a mission to demystify Congress through our monthly town halls. Rest assured that you have someone in Congress advocating for the seniors in our district and always, always centering those most marginalized in the work that we're doing and my policy making decisions here in Washington. I'm proud of the way that we've cared for our seniors through the COVID-19 pandemic. Seniors have been among the most impacted by the pandemic and the American Rescue Plan delivered accordingly. We delivered funding to get seniors vaccinated, expanded access to SNAP benefits, and provided funding to make healthcare more affordable for seniors not yet eligible for Medicare. And though we're not quite out of the pandemic yet, it's time to talk about caring for our seniors beyond the pandemic. The care of our seniors should always be a top priority for our communities, and it is indeed a priority of mine. I'm committed to safeguarding and expanding Social Security for the benefit of generations to come. Social Security is a promise that we've made to our seniors in retirement and people with disabilities. A promise made should absolutely be a promise kept. I wanna make sure that Social Security is not only solvent for the future, but stronger in the future. And that's why I'm joining my colleague, Congressman John Larson, in introducing the Social Security 2100, a sacred trust. This is the legislation that we need to deliver on our promise to Social Security beneficiaries. Congressman Larson has long been a champion for Social Security, and Congressman Larson sits on the House Ways and Means Committee and is chairman of the subcommittee on Social Security. So y'all, we have the expert here with us this evening. We're thrilled that he could join us, and we're going to get to your questions after a few words from Congressman Larson. And remember, if you have any questions on the phone, dial zero to get connected to someone who will take down your questions. Congressman, I know your time is limited. We have a lot of work ahead of us this week as we prepare for some important votes, not just later this week, but also tonight. So I'm going to turn, turn it over to you, Congressman, for a few brief remarks. Well, thank you so much, Nakima. And uh, how fortunate the people are in your district uh, to succeed uh, the beloved John Lewis and to come in with the kind of contagious enthusiasm uh, that you have for, as John would say, getting in good trouble. And if ever there was a time uh, that's needed, as you outlined with regard to this pandemic, it's addressing the needs of Social Security. Uh, everybody in the district ought to be proud of the fact that you are an original co-sponsor of this bill. In fact, came to Congress on a mission, a mission to make sure that Congress did its responsibility. John, in fact, uh, sat at a press conference, oh, about a year and a half ago, listen, Social Security is the next major civil rights issue because of the way that it's treated people, especially women and people of color. And he said, uh, we've got to make sure that we upgrade these benefits and only Congress can do that. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been more than 50 years since Congress has enhanced Social Security. And this is Congress's sole responsibility. And so even though we've gotten through this enhancement, and as uh, Nakima pointed out, 
you know, you've been able in, during this pandemic to uh, get vaccinations and to help out with the earned income tax credit. Uh, what needs to be done and what this is underscored is the way in which we need to enhance social security. Let's start by this and something, uh, again, I wanna commend Akima for coming in and saying, hey, look, social security is not an entitlement. Do not ever let anyone tell you that this is an entitlement. It's an earned benefit. All of you know that. You've paid into it all of your lives and all you have to do to verify that is check your pay stub where it says FICA, Federal Insurance Contribution. Who's yours? And those contributions you've made throughout a lifetime. And yet Congress has not lived up to its responsibility. And when Representative Williams came to Congress, she said, I'm going to make sure we fulfill our responsibility and get this bill to the floor and make sure that we vote on it so that we not only make sure that Social Security is there for everyone, but that we enhance it. There hasn't been a single benefit improvement in more than 50 years. Has the cost of living, has the cost of groceries, pharmaceuticals, rent, heating and cooling your home, the basic necessities of life have all risen over this time. And it's long overdue for Congress to step up and take on that responsibility. That's why the contagious and enthusiastic and dedicated and persistent effort on the part of Representative Williams is so vitally needed at this time. Let me just briefly tell you what our bill will do. Uh, it increases benefits for all Social Security recipients. And you know that it's more than retirement, it's disability, spousal and children's benefits. It increases it across the board by 2%, with more increases going to lower and middle income to ensure no one retires into poverty after a full career of work by improving benefits for long-serving low-wage workers who, through no fault of their own, paid into a system but were working in jobs that paid less than minimum wage. Nowhere in the greatest country on the face of the earth does someone work all their lives, pay into a system, and get a below poverty level check from Social Security. That's wrong. That's why Representative Williams is going to get in good trouble to make sure that this happens. It improves the cost of living adjustment, COLA, as it's referred to. We introduced what the AARP has been arguing for a long time to have what we call CPIE, which means getting a COLA that's actually based on the cost that you incur on an ev in everyday experiences of making ends meet. It expands benefits so the middle class income widows and widowers from two income households will receive a larger benefit. It eliminates the five month waiting period for disability benefit. It ensures the children who are being taken care of by a relative will receive dependent benefits without having to adopt the child. Provides student benefits for young adults up to the age of 22. It used to be 17, but with people going through college and oftentimes grandparents having to raise their children, this is essential. Repeals the windfall elimination provision, which is commonly referred to as WEP, and the GPO provision, commonly referred to as the government pension offset, that currently penalizes many public servants, including many of you in the great state of Georgia. It increases benefits for the oldest of the old, those who have been receiving benefits for 20 years or more, which will help many women who live longer than their spouses. It provides caregiver credits to ensure that people, mostly women, are not penalized in retirement for taking time, time out of the workforce to care for children and other dependents. It provides a tax cut for middle income beneficiaries by raising the threshold of taxation for social security from 35,000 to 50,000. Our bill also improves the solvency of the trust fund and pushes out its depletion date and it guarantees that those benefits will be there. We pay for all of this by applying FICA earnings and this may surprise some of you to people earning 400,000 and above. Why? Because they don't currently pay it. Why should somebody who's you know, making $50,000 pay for it throughout a lifetime, but at 400,000, you're exempt? So we're lifting the cap as it calls. And that's what we're using as a pay for. And the thing I like most about this bill, and especially because of the dedication 
and as I said, contagious enthusiasm and hard work and persistent effort that I know Representative Williams is bringing to this cause and bringing to our caucus. And with that, uh, Representative Williams, I'll kick it back to you. Thank you so much for giving us that rundown, Congressman Larson, and for everything that you have done over the years to continue to advance this legislation. I'm going to be right there with you to make sure that we see this over the finish line. Um, we do have some questions that came in earlier, and we kind of combined a lot of them. There's a lot of worry about cuts to Social Security, including a sizable 20% cut in 2034. Can you talk about that some and how we're addressing that moving forward so that we can alleviate some of those fears? Exactly. Well, thank you. And as many uh, in the audience may know, the last time Congress enacted uh, legislation was in 1983. And in fact, this year in January, the age will go up in 2022 to 67. Every time you raise the age, that's a benefit cut that's equivalent to 7%. But more astonishing than that, and Nikima, as you know, if Congress does nothing, by 2034, there would be a 20% across the board cut. That's what our bill addresses directly. Our bill says, not only are we not gonna cut it, because we haven't enhanced it in 50 years, we're gonna provide the enhancements that we just, just talked about and add to the solvency of the program. And it's all paid for. And it's done so by making sure that everyone who's in the system pays the same rate. And so we're lifting the cap on people over $400,000, which helps pay for those enhancements and adds to our solvency. Solvency will continue to be an, an issue throughout this, but once we address this and put the money forward, Social Security will remain solvent. More than 10,000 baby boomers a day become eligible for Social Security. But Nakima, as you know, millennials will need this more than even their baby boomer counterparts because for the most part, they haven't had the opportunity to put away for pensions. They're not in the same position of collecting assets. So this legislation is going to guarantee that it will be there for both. Thank you for your support. Thank you so much. And you kind of answered the, the second question for people who are wondering, will Social Security ever go broke? And that's why we have to do something, y'all. That's why it's important for me to stand with Congressman Larson to support his legislation because we can't allow Social Security go, to go broke. We have to make these enhancements. We have to make improvements. And you've heard how long it has been since there have been updates to Social Security. And one other question, Congressman Larson, as the chairman of the subcommittee on Social Security, are there other pieces of legislation to protect and expand Social Security that we should be aware of or looking out for or that you need? Uh, my constituents are advocates. We like to speak up and make our voices heard. So is there anything else that you need us looking out for? Well, first, let, let, me, let me say, first and foremost, Social Security will never go bankrupt. You and I will make sure of that. It is the full faith and credit of the United States government. But what everybody has to do, uh, all the constituents in Georgia and Connecticut and all across this great nation of ours have got to make sure that everybody says to Congress, do your responsibility and vote. That's all that's required here is to put this in front of the American people and put it forth on the floor of the Congress and people take a vote. This bill is the culmination of subcommittee work to develop Do we lose Congressman Larson? We might have had a technical difficulty and lost Congressman Larson, but we, if he joins us back, we will bring him right in. We're gonna go straight to some Q&A from the audience, some live questions that I have seen um, right here that you've submitted. So first we have Linda Jennings. Linda, are you on the line? And if you could state your name of where you're calling, your name and where you're calling from this evening.
Okay, I'm not hearing Ms. Jennings. But we can go ahead and ask, ask the question. Um, Linda was wondering whether Congresswoman Williams plans to vote on Medicare expansion and what that, what that expansion will do for Medicare and Medicaid recipients. So Linda, um, I hope that you can hear me this evening, even if we couldn't hear you, but we have to make sure that we have universal access to quality, affordable care. In Congress, I've been committed, not just in Congress, before I got to Congress and my work in the state Senate, committed to making sure that we expand Medicaid and making sure that Medicare is even expanded to include essential benefits like vision, hearing, and dental that we all know is an actual part of healthcare. So I've been in support of lowering the age of Medicare eligibility to make sure that more seniors have the opportunity to retire with dignity. You've done your part and Congress needs to do ours. But at the same time, you mentioned expanding Medicaid and y'all, this is something that I've been fighting for for a very long time. We know that in Georgia, we're one of the very few states in the country that refuse to expand Medicaid for political purposes, not for the benefit of any Georgians. Even after Congress provided Governor Kemp with incentives to do so in the American Rescue Plan, there are millions who could be covered, but they aren't simply because of, of a political decision. So I am a, um, a co-sponsor and an original co-sponsor of the Medicaid Save Lives Act. And we have, we're working on that with Senator John Ossoff and Senator Raphael Warnock, and we're going to get that across the finish line, y'all. We're going to do everything that we can to show up for you, even when some other leaders in our state are not. Thank you. We're going to go ahead and go to one more question here. Next, we have Glenn. Glenn, are you on the line? Let's go ahead and just ask. Um, Lynn is uh, qualified for Social Security next January, but cannot retire, wants to know how to apply. So Glenn, thank you for that question this evening. And first, I want you to always use my office as a resource. My district office phone number is 404-659-0116. And we are happy to support you in getting in touch with any federal agency. And if you um, also can't reach our office, which you should always be able to reach our office, we have some dedicated constituent advocate staff. Um, our constituent services manager, Jared McKinley, is on the line and you'll be hearing from him later, but you can get help in our office or calling Social Security, the Social Security Administration about applying. My understanding is that you can get Social Security retirement benefits and work at the same time before your full retirement age. Now, we know that we have to look at each situation individually. So, Glenn, I encourage you to take down the number to my office, 404-659-0116, and we will get you some answers. Thank you so much. Let's see if there are any other questions in the chat that we want to get to or that we're able to get to. All right, so Sandra Neal would like to know what the Congresswoman's plan is to help seniors receive their social security benefits and even have an entity in place to help people that are very low income. Sandra, are you on this evening? A lot of people submitted questions and we're trying to elevate you to a speaker status so that you can Ask your question, Sandra Neal calling in from Atlanta. Sandra, you should be able to speak now. Can we hear you? Well, Ms. Neal, if you need support in getting your social security benefits, again, my office is always available five days a week. We even take some calls over the weekend to make sure that we are getting people the support that they need. Again, my office number is 404-659-0116. All right, I think we have time for just about one more question in this, um, in this little section before we get to our constituent services side.
Patricia Carter from Decatur, are you on the line? Yes, I am. How are you doing today? Doing fine. How are you? Doing great. First of all, I just want to thank God for you and the great job that you are doing to represent us. Thank you so much, Ms. Carter. What's and I wanted to, uh, to, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. I can hear you. Yes, I what one of my uh, a lot of things you have already addressed was my concern, but one of them too was uh, making sure that senior citizens, uh, their identity are protected. Someone has stole my identity and went into the bank online to make to open up two accounts in my name. And I had told the bank that uh, my identity had been stolen three years ago and for them to keep that alert on the bank. So somebody hacked they, their, their bank, their computer, and took the alert off because it never would have happened if the bank had the alert that they supposed to have had on the computer. And so many seniors like myself are living alone you know, and um, they they have hardly no protection when it comes down to trying to protect their identity. So I just wanted to put that out uh, to you so that you can, you know, keep it on my keep it in mind to see what you can do to 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 help us. I called Social Security and I asked them could they put an alert on my Social Security number. They told me I had to call the credit bureau. And uh, I had a freeze on my security, on my social security account at the credit bureau. So um, evidently the freeze did not, did not help me any cause they, and I don't do no online uh, telephone banking because my computer has been hacked and my phone has been hacked too. So um, there's so many seniors I know that's out there because uh, when I called Social Security, they said that a lot of seniors are having that problem. And one reason why, because they live alone, so people think that they are more vulnerable because they don't see a lot of people coming and going, and they, you know, they live alone, and it's it's it's, it's not easy for us out here. Well, thank you so much, Ms. Carter, for bringing this to my attention. Um, and I have the, the fortune of serving on the House Financial Services Committee where the credit bureaus are under our purview. And so this is absolutely something that we have been hearing a lot about and looking into. There have been a lot of data breaches and people's information has been shared um, through different companies that people have used, um, whether it is grocery shopping or paying a bill. And a lot of companies have had um, personal information of people breached. And so this is absolutely something that we are looking into. And I want to make sure that you get our office number, Ms. Carter, which is 404-659-0116, because this is absolutely something that the credit bureaus should be looking into as well. And as we're continuing to work with them, I want to make sure that we're able to keep you updated on, on what we're able to do here in Congress. Thank you so much for bringing this to my attention. Okay. All right, Congresswoman, I think we're going to go to one more question in this section. We're going to hear from Randy in Riverdale, Georgia. One second. Randy, are you there? Brandy. Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Thank you. Sorry about that. And uh, what's your question? My question is, is why does people that's on Social Security and Medicaid and stuff have to be I mean, their Medicaid and their, their Social Security is going down, and they've worked their whole entire lives to build the government up, to pay their earnings. Every paycheck that they've worked for goes straight straight in, straight into the Congress, to the government, but yet they're getting little when they should be getting more, and they're having to pay more for 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 their medication for their doctor bills, you know, I, I'm I'm not trying to be mean or anything here, but 
our our elderly people, our senior citizens, everybody that's put in for everything that they've done, they should be took care of. Brandy, they, you they are should not be struggling. Right. You are, you not are be not struggling. being mean, Brandy. You are absolutely right. You have paid into the system your entire life. Our seniors should very well, should be taken care of in their golden years. And that is why I am a proud original co-sponsor of Congressman Jim Lars John Larson's bill the, to fix Social Security, the Social Security 2100 Act. Congress has not acted. And it is unfortunate that now we have- No, they hadn't. People people needing help. And that's why we're having this town hall tonight, because I want my constituents to understand that I am here to serve you. And we are working on this. And I am an original co-sponsor on this bill. And we have to continue to push to get this done because you deserve it. Our seniors deserve it. People in our communities who have paid into the system deserve this. And so I am here to work on your behalf and we're going to get this done, Brandy. All right. Thank you. Thank you thank so you. much. All right. So thank you so much for all of your questions. We will have some more time for Q&A, but um, Congressman Larson has to head to another meeting. So I just want to thank him for all of his time this evening for fitting us in with so much that is going on here in Washington. So now we're going to shift gears a little, y'all. Another important issue for our seniors is improving health care. We must ensure that Medicare meets the needs of the people that it serves. My office hears from people often looking for assistance with Medicare and Medicaid services. So in addition to talking about our work in Washington, we wanted to include what's happening right in the district. And for that, we're joined by Teresa Zayas from the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services in Atlanta. We'll get to questions for Teresa after a few quick remarks, but remember to dial zero if you're joining by phone and want to ask a question. Teresa, thank you for joining us today and the floor is yours. Thank you, Congressman Williams. And thank you so much for having me on your call today. I'm honored to be here to talk to your constituency. Well, as you just mentioned, um, we're going to talk a little bit about Medicare and Medicare is under the supervision of the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. And we have an office here in Atlanta. So as you might already know, because you might know more than we all do, you know, Medicare is for people 65 and older or, or, or certain people with uh, disabilities under 65 or any, any person of any age with end stage renal disease. So those are the three categories that someone can qualify for Medicare. As the Congress, Congresswoman had mentioned, you have contributed to get this benefit. So um, every check while you were working, they were taking uh, um, uh, money for your insurance. So if you work, and I'm just giving you a little bit of social security information, if you work at least 10 years full time, um, and a certain amount of, of earning, you have paid into what we call Medicare Part A, and that's the hospital part of Medicare, okay? And, that, and that's what, when you turn 65, that is what you get automatically. So the agencies that are overseeing um, Medicare, we have Social Security, which handles the enrollment. And it might be a little bit you know, challenging because sometimes you don't know where to go when you have some issues with Medicare. So everything that has to do with enrollment, you go to Social Security. Anything that has to do with the program, like with your doctors or access to care or, or a medication that suddenly you were getting and suddenly you know, you disappear for your plan, then you contact Medicare, okay? So what are the parts of Medicare? Like I mentioned, we have part A, which is the one that you contributed while you were working. Part B, which is the medical insurance, that's when you see your doctors, 
you know, out of patient services, and then part D, which is the drug coverage. And for those that has been with us for a long time, we just got the prescription drug coverage in 2006. So it's, it's, not, it's not that old. So we are very excited that we were able to get prescription drug coverage for the Medicare beneficiaries. So there are two ways that you can receive Medicare, okay? You can receive Medicare, what we call original Medicare, in which you can go to any Medicare provider nationwide, and as long as you meet your deductible, and then you pay your 20% copay, and you can go to any Medicare provider nationwide. And to your renal Medicare, you can you, you know, enroll into a prescription, a standalone prescription drug, drug plan. Okay. The other way that you can get Medicare is by is through a private health insurance company. Those are the Agnes, Blue Cross and Blue Shield, Kaiser, uh, United. Okay, and and but those you have to be careful because you you need to go to the network of those health plans. So you cannot go anywhere nationwide. You have to go to your this area to your network. And we don't recommend either one, okay? It, it depends of each person's medical situation and what will work best for that individual. I have heard great stories about original Medicare and I have heard great stories about individuals with Medicare Advantage. So that, is, that will depend on, you know, what will meet your, your needs. So that's in general information about Medicare. If you need help in navigating the Medicare program, because health insurance is difficult to navigate, not only for Medicare, it's for everybody. So we understand the challenges that someone might have in navigating the Medicare program. So the person can call 1-800-MEDICARE. That's 1-800-633-4227. They can, if there's, they feel comfortable about using their computer and navigating it that way, they can go to medicare.gov. Also, you will receive annually a Medicare and you handbook, which it will go out in the mail this week for this year. And you can also contact the State Health Insurance Assistance Program, which here in Georgia is Georgia Cares. They're funded by the federal government to provide unbiased and free counseling and enrollment assistance to Medicare beneficiaries. And that number is 866-552-4464, auction four. I'm going to repeat that number again, 866-552-4464. Six four option option four, and I received some questions. So you let me know if I should have read the questions now, Amber. So thank you so much for all of that information, Teresa. We um, have a lot of questions that are coming in for you. This is a hot topic, and people want your expertise. So I'm going to turn it over to Amber so that she can call on some um, members, some constituents who have posted their questions and you can hear them live. Okay, so Amber, I'm turning it over to you now. 
All right, Josephine from East Point, are you on the line? I see you have a Medicare question. Hi, yes, I'm here. Go right ahead. My question concerns the annual, annual the monthly premium we pay. Uh, and I know it increases every year. So is that based on a percentage uh, or how, how is that determined? Uh, you know, you may get a gross amount, but then of course they take out each month that percentage, that amount for the premium, which is a pretty good amount. So, and it increases every year. And my question is, why does it increase each year? and um, you don't know what your net is going to be. Ms. Josephine, there is a formula. Yes. There is a formula for everything. And it has to do also with the cost of living, okay? And believe okay. it or not, believe it or not, you know, it, I know that it is, it's increasing every year, but there were a lot of years that they were the same. It's, and you might not remember, but it was, Maybe, maybe 10 years ago. It yes, was, uh, people, if you remember, it was staying yep. the same. And then one year it went lower. So it has to do with the cost of living. And of course, you don't want to hear that because, you know, you know, it's, and I'm going to say the amount. It is $148.50 that a lot of people, I don't know, they, they need it for, for, for other uh, basic needs. But yes. unfortunately, Ms. Josephine, and I guess um, mm -hmm. Congressman Williams can elaborate more about that. Medicare has a trust to be able to run the program. And in able to run it, we need to keep a certain amount of funding. And that's how it, this formula comes into place to maintain the funds and the trust to run the program. I see. So is that a percentage or is it that amount for everyone, no matter what income level, no, no matter what no, the no, income no. level I'm glad, is? I'm glad that you're asking that question because we have what we call an income-related monthly adjustment amount. Okay, so okay. way mm -hmm. back, way back, Okay, way back, everyone was paying the same. Mm -hmm. But like maybe, um, and I believe it was under the Obama administration, by the way, this was um, implemented. So individuals that they filed their taxes and they have an income of 88,000 88, or less, mm -hmm. they are the ones that are going to pay the 148.50. Or couples that combine together, they make 176,000 a year or less. They will pay the 148.50. So between 88,000 and 11, 111,000 for an individual. Those will pay mm -hmm. 207 with 90 cents. Oh, I see. So it goes, it, 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 it keeps increasing until th there is a cap. And I think maybe um, Congressman Williams was talking a little bit about that cap uh, when it comes to Social Security, but with Medicare, if the individual makes more than 500,000 and above, they will pay 504 with 90 cents. And Ms. Josephine, I, I know that this is difficult to understand over a, um, a teletown hall. And I want to rest assured that we want to get you the exact information that you need. And so this is a perfect segue into the next segment 
on constituent services because we have someone in our Atlanta office who works with Teresa day in and day out on a weekly basis to get residents of the fifth district all of the information that they need. And so my office is here to serve you. You can contact us for any help with federal agencies, including the Social Security Administration and the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. So I want to briefly bring in Jarrett McKinley, my constituent services manager, and he can give you a rundown on how he can help and also make sure that he follows up so that you can get the information that you need and get your questions answered if you weren't able to get your question answered today. Jared, are you on? I am on. Can everybody hear? We can hear you. Awesome. Thank you for this opportunity, Congresswoman. It's deeply appreciated. Um, what is infectious about our Congresswoman is that her passion for constituents filters over to what we do on a daily basis. And literally from the time we sit down, everyone, to the time we go home, we are here to serve and we don't take that lightly. The Congresswoman's voice and power allows us to do what we do best, which is one, answer phone calls, two, service to constituents, and again, we take pride in what we do. Um, it, I would be remiss if I did not take this opportunity to also thank um, Teresa and her wonderful, wonderful team. Um, they are responsive, they care, they will take my calls, they will take my emails on behalf of constituents, and they do not fail to respond. And the only thing I can do is say thank you and give them an, a, an amazing hand clap. Um, many constituents on this line definitely know that it's very difficult to reach out to agencies and get a response. Congresswoman Nakima Williams makes sure, and she makes it part of our priority, that we answer phone calls, we return voice, voicemail messages, and we serve the people of the fabulous fifth. So with that being said, how do we get service, or how do you, can you get service through us? Most importantly, as the Congresswoman mentioned, please make sure to have our phone number. Uh, it's 404-659-659. 0116. That number again, 404 659 0116. Not only will we help you with Social Security issues, Medicare, Medicaid, we also help you with any federal entity such as IRS, Small Business Administration, um, Office of Personnel Management, and U USPS. We are here to serve. Um, it, is, it is not something that we take lightly. You can also reach us by sending in a form, which you can find on the Congresswoman's website, which is nakimawilliams.house.gov. That's nakimawilliams.house.gov. The easiest way to find the form that I am referring to is just type in help with a federal agency in the search box and down the middle of the page, it'll say help with a federal agency. From there, all you do is fill it out online, hit submit, and it comes to our office. We will then respond not only to your question, we will also send this information to our federal partners and let you know what's happening along the way. Now, we do require just to manage expectations that you give the agencies 30 to 60 days uh, based on COVID and as a result of COVID, it takes a little longer for agencies to work some of these cases because of being shorthanded. But do know that the Congresswoman staff, my team, is always monitoring, monitoring our, our um, web base. We're monitoring our input systems so that we can respond to you with frequent updates. Again, my name is Jared McKinley. My email address is jared.mckinley at mail.house.gov. That's jared, J-A-R-E-D dot McKinley, M-C-K-I-N-L-E-Y at mail, M-A-I-L dot house.gov. Any questions, any concerns, please let me know. And I will be more than happy to serve on behalf of our great Congresswoman and on behalf of our great constituency. Thank you, Congresswoman, for giving me the opportunity. Thank you so much, Jared. And y'all, when Jared says that he is here to serve, we truly mean that. So if you need any assistance from our office, please remember that I am here to serve you and so is my office. So please remember our office number in Atlanta is 404 
659-0116 if you need assistance with any federal agencies. If you have questions about legislation or anything in Washington, D.C. that is happening policy-wise, you can contact my Washington, D.C. office at 202-225-3801. Thank you to all of our speakers and special guests. And thank you for all of you for taking the time out of your evening to join us. I know that as we continue to do this work around securing social security for all of you, because you have paid into it and you deserve this, we are continuing to work on the Sacred Trust Act, Social Security 2100, introduced by Representative John Larson. And I am a proud original co-sponsor because we need to make sure that Social Security is solvent and is working for us in 2021 and beyond, not based on something that has not been updated since before I was born. We're going to get this done, y'all, because you deserve it and my constituents deserve the very best. Thank you again for joining us and have a good evening.